turn to public session. John, Mr. Wolf. Here. Mr. Grove. Here. Mr. Canyon. Here. Mr. Shirley. Here. Dr. Carver. Here. All right. Item G, review and approval of the May 19, 2014 regular meeting minutes of the Board of Education. Do we need a motion? So moved. I'll second. Motion by Mrs. Catania, seconded by Dr. Tharp. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Ms. Gross? Yes. Ms. Catania? Yes. Mr. Scholey? Yes. Dr. Tharp? Yes. All right. Um, presentation and recognition. Um, well, we have two new uh, teachers here on the agenda tonight. We have um, Bill Corbett, who will teach uh, fourth or fifth grade. I'll pass around his name and Brian Fonderlin, correct? Yes. Um, who's also going to be in fourth or fifth grade. I'm not quite sure how Mrs. Fisk had him played out there and which one was which, so uh, Mrs. Fisk will be calling him. I have one in that grade. I thought I'd hide my name. Uh, <laughs> so I wanted to congratulate you and uh, welcome you. I do have a couple shirts to give you. I'll have to check the sizes. Great. Thank you very much. Hang on. Let me see what I got. Good. There you go. Some shirts. Welcome aboard. I think I told you Mrs. Fisk will be uh, getting a hold of you. Yes. Okay. Thank Very you. Very good. Thank Thanks you. for coming out. I know uh, the board likes to put a face to a name, so appreciate Thanks. that. Thanks for coming. And then we have uh, the rest coming next month at the board meeting. Uh, softball honors. Madison Tomano was first team ITCL Tier 1. Becca Jones was first team ITCL Tier 1. Gabby Tharp was second team ITCL Tier 1. And Beth Ritchie was honorable mention ITCL. Baseball honors, uh, they were team sectional champions. Jeremy Fitzpatrick was first team ITCL. Uh, boys were in Tier 2. Nick Wallachak was second team ITCL Tier 2. Nate Clark was second team. Tier 2, and Tyler Tatani was second team, and Matt John was honorable mention. Boys track, regional track meet, Trevor Morgan was sixth place in the 400 meter dash. Uh, district track meet, Trevor Morgan was third place in the 400, Tyler Staten was uh, sixth place in the 400, and Devin Sika was fifth place in the 3200 run. The Mahoney County track meet, uh, we had quite a few do very well there. Trevor Morgan was fourth place in the 400. Tyler Staten was fifth place in the 400. Uh, Marty McKinney was third place in the 800. Devin Sika, first place in the 3200 run and second in the 1600 run. Adam Smith was third place in the 110 meter hurdles. Tyler Staten was fifth in high jump. Ryan Fife, fifth in high jump. Zach Haggerty was third place in the long jump. Mike Asen was third place in the long jump. I have two thirds, so. Four uh, by 100 relay team placed fourth, and that was uh, Zach Barlett, Zach Haggerty, Joe Burnside, and Trevor Morgan. The four by 200 relay placed fifth, and that was Trevor Morgan, Zach Barlett, Joe Burnside, and Adam Smith. And the four by 800 relay placed second with Devin Sika, Stephen Uhoffs, Tyler Staten, and Marty McKinney. The ITCL meet in Tier 2, uh, Joe Burnside was 5th in the 100 meter dash, Trevor Morgan was 3rd in the 400 meter uh, dash, Tyler Staten was 5th in the 400, Devin Sika was 4th place in the 3200 run, and 5th place in the 1600 run. Adam Smith was 5th place in the 110 hurdles, and 5th place in the 300 hurdles. Zach Haggerty was 5th place in the long jump, and the 4 by 100 relay team placed 4th, and that was Zach Barlett, Devin Bortmus, Joe Burnside, and Zach Haggerty. The 4 by 200 relay placed 4th with Devin Bortmus, Ryan Fife, Trevor Morgan, and Adam Smith. And the 4 by 400 team placed 3rd. That was Tyler Staten, Devin Sika, Steve Uhas, and Marty McKinney. And the 4 by 800 relay team placed 3rd with Tyler Staten, Devin Sika, Steve Uhas, and Marty McKinney. And girls track, uh, the ITCL meet tier one with Sammy Oblinger was uh, fourth place in the shot put, and Lindsey Morgan, Sam Santer, Cheyenne Morrow, and Elisa Whitney 
uh, was sixth place in the 4 by 100 relay. So quite a few of our uh, spring athletes did very well this year. I see that. Great. Okay, round table discussion. Kim? Yeah. I have one topic that's something we discussed last month concerning the installation of vending machines at the school. I contacted the OSBA and we can provide many choices to the machines for the kids after school hours. During school hours I think it was discussed that we have the cafeteria and that's not needed. I spoke with the representative from Coca-Cola and exchanged emails with the Pepsi rep and I have a listing that I'll pass around of the options for drink and food. Um, the options are very vast. And there is revenue to be generated. My question would be to you, Mr. Zinger, hopefully you can let me know what options exist for the revenue that's generated from the use of vending machines. Uh, we have one vending machine. Coke machine at the elementary school, the teacher's lounge. It's the one we have right now. We received our last check was like fourteen dollars and five cents. I just posted ten today. Uh, Forty percent of it goes into the cafeteria. We break it up. Thirty percent of the athletic funding. Thirty percent of the principal's job. That's what we do. Three bucks, huh? That's what we do with the uh, the money with that. Okay. So, and I have a listing here. I asked the Coke rep to. Let me know what other schools that they service, and he just gave me what he said was a few, but I won't read them all off, but they're on this list that he sent me appears to be about 15. Um, I think most schools have them, if not all. Um, what I'd like to do is make a motion to move forward to uh, installing the vending machines for the students and the faculty, proposing that they not be utilized until 3 o'clock until next morning when breakfast is served and I would also like to be involved in the process if it moves forward in selecting uh, the vendors since I've talked to them both I could be a bit knowledgeable. Would we then not have the after school program then? Because that's can't free, offer that right? and not have money. That's well we free. pay the employees to be here. I mean it's till three o'clock though. That's what James yeah. said. Yeah. So my yeah my purpose is three o'clock on for the kids that are here for activities. We just have to make sure somebody would be here to unplug them like for games and stuff because I don't think your boosters would want people to be using the machines when they're trying to make money. The, the Coke rep said that you can set these on timers and they're pretty high tech these days to be utilized when. Yeah, just you someone would have to do I mean someone would have to know when the games are to enter the machines. Hey, did you ask him um, if there's change gets lost or something like that. How's that how's that work? The kids getting the money back. I asked if there were many issues with the machines. He said these the there machines like are the so tight case. and okay. computerized. You may have that, but it's nothing that, that he said that the schools aren't working through when they have them. Pepsi is is more Gatorade, which I prefer over Powerade. Um, so my question to the board is does anybody have a problem in moving forward and, and getting hard figures and the items that can be utilized. I have some uh, examples from Coke of what they provide. So I'm just looking for feedback from anybody. Yeah, just here or both buildings? I guess. Want to talk about that too. Uh, definitely here and I, I, I don't know why we couldn't have a machine over there for some Gatorade. And, uh, so there'll be snacks too much? Just snacks and a Coke machine? Yes. Two, two, like two machines in each building? Potentially. Whatever we would decide. But I think I've heard a lot from the kids and can you speak? You're the only student we have here. Um, actually, the last day of school, I had these kids um, write stuff on a note card and say, like, what I could try to bring up in front of you guys. And vending machines did come up a lot. And, I mean, they're backing it 100%. They're, they would really like to see that happen. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see any negative to it. I try to think about it, but I don't, I don't see it. Um, so, any comments from anybody? I'd like to make a motion to move forward. Well, we can add it to after um, treasures and legislative report. Thank you. Okay. When you say move forward, let me ask, because I know last meeting we heard that the superintendent and the principal weren't real crazy about the vending machines and who's going to maintain them, oversee them. 
monitor them. You know, I'd like to know a little more about what's involved with them. You know, if, if we're going to go this route, you know, I'd be okay with having somebody come in and talk to us about them. I don't know that I want to necessarily move forward for saying let's put them in. I guess I have a concern because they have a concern. Um, and, and what is the concern again? Because I, I don't, because I asked the gentleman, uh, I said, do you have issues with having these in the school with students vandalizing or change problems? He said they service themselves. So I, I don't know. The newer ones could. I'm used to the older ones. And the concern would be is when kids lose money, they come down the office and they want someone to give them the money now. You know, and you have to take their name and then you have to wait for the company to come in and then they reimburse you by the name you have. Yeah, he, you know, I don't know who's going to just give them the money because we can't just hand them the money when they say they lost money in the machine. Yeah, it's pretty computerized. I've used them all over the place, the high tech ones. I've never had any issues. And when I learned that, again, I think we're the only school that doesn't have them. And, and I would like, I was at Fitch. They have 14 in their cafeteria. Um, I think they're on all the time. I just, me personally, I just don't like how they look. But I mean, that's just me. I'm sorry, you said that's Mitch, but do sure. we get revenue at the school system? Yes. Mm -hmm. That was my next question. Is there have to be a standard agreement? I'll call the guy, but if you're talking to him, can you tell him to send it over? Like one of those, like Fitch, what they have. Yeah, here's this. And let me let me clarify. I wasn't saying this is going to happen. I just wanted to move forward to uh, getting the bids to do and all that. Yeah, to do more. Yeah, I've learned what I've learned today, and it seems like a no-brainer. It's not going to take anybody's time up, and the kids are going to love it, yeah. which is kind of why we're here. And uh, that's all. If I, 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 I'll call the guy too. I have no problem. Doing that. As long as I get. Why don't you guys it. collaborate? We don't really need a motion to move. Yeah. Yeah. You have a name on the contract. That's why I'll call you. There's going to be approval for a contract, right? I assume there's going to be something that's. Right. Right. We, right. Right. we need to get a contract and see, you know, what Fitch yeah. has, where the schools have. Make sure we get the 50% you know, of the revenue. Or whatever. I don't know. That's fine. So moving forward, I'll work with you on. I'll show you what I have. We'll talk to or both Pepsi and Coke. Have the guy shoot us an email? Have the guy shoot us an email? Yeah, I've got some. I'll send you already. Yeah. Thanks for your work. Oh, you're welcome. That's it for me. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. Sure. All right. Um, I'll go around here in order, I guess, since I'm sitting here. Uh, the Jackson... Um, Fourth of July parade. We're checking Fourth of July parade. Uh, they <coughs> will start to meet and line up between nine and nine thirty at Liberty Steel, like they always do, and step off as they can. Usually, the board walks in the parade. So what I need to know is, is anybody willing to walk in the parade? You know, because we've always had the board members walk. Um, and Kirk and I were at the citizens meeting the other night. Um, did you get a chance to talk to Mr. Kittle about the band being in the parade? No, he's in Disney okay. right now because I talked to him about something else. Okay. Um, but you'll but, follow uh, up with him? Cause I will. I already got Mr. Um, Mason's good. Okay. Sent that to but Mr. Eason is good for that Wednesday night. Okay. July 30th to help set up at the stadium. Okay. Uh, and I do have uh, Mr. Vega checking with the National Honor Society to see if they will help out with that Amish dinner. Oh, that'd be a great one. September 13th. The Jackson Citizens Association has got quite a few functions coming up. One of them is an Amish dinner in September, and they were hoping to get some help just busting tables and doing stuff for a few hours or looking at doing a fundraiser. Um, they picked the weekend, I think it was September 13th, it was a Saturday. Yeah. It sounds real nice, to be honest with you. Dinners sound great. Yeah, they, they're going to have uh, a four and a six setting. Yeah. And I think they can sell 122 tickets per setting. Yeah. So, and you, you can either come in, sit down, or take out the all Amish cook. You know, everything except beverages, food, dessert. It's like $15 for an adult, I think seven fifty. Your beverages are included, and it's just that they have to provide it. That's what the difference is. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, when is it? I believe it's September Saturday, 13th. Saturday, September 13th. Yes. Now, and they're creating I, a flyer for it. Do we need to commit to the 4th of July? I am out of town. Well, I have that on here. Is that a problem? Well, we do need to commit as a board. Let me know, because it's getting down the wire. And that's <coughs> we're going to walk. Uh, I mean, to be out of town that day, but if I'm not to be out of town, the parade actually is on Friday. Oh, it's on Friday. It's on the fourth. It's on. Yeah. I, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there too. Do um, I need to be there? That's the next. No, what we do is we throw out. We walk as a board. If whoever can make it, we throw candy out. And then I have to. I'm just going to go tomorrow and let them know whoever's coming. I'll fill out the form with the names and everything. Yeah. It's a simple, short, sweet parade, but. And at what time is it at? It. Um, Lineup is between 9 and 9.30. Parade starts at 10. It's usually over in kind of an hour, 10.30 to 11.45. Yeah. Let me talk. I'll get back to you. Okay. 
I am. Well, do we want to see who's in it? Mitch? I'm in. Yes. I know you did. Victor, are you going to be able to go? Well, I mean, Brad, I can walk, yeah, but I should be able to go. Get your golf course, get you a card. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Doctor, I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, then I'll have I'll have the candy for you that morning. Uh, yeah. So it, when you know he'll bring the candy, we just walk along, throw it out, shake away. Pipe, pretty delivery steel. Oh. It, it's fun. Uh, you get to see a lot of people. Um, that's all I had. Jeff. Uh, the only thing I noticed, John, is if you could just comment on SM2. It looks like we're up. Uh, but it's mainly on the revenue side, our expenses are slightly up. Is that something that... That's May's... Uh, is it a timing May's effect or what, it's what a timing, is it? It's a timing effect. We just received our homestead and rolled back today, in fact, $340,000, $306. Um, you see next month, all those numbers are going to be aligned. Expenditures pretty much aligned, too. Okay. I believe we're only like $15,000 in uh, next uh, negative spending this year, which is a good thing. So, forecast looks pretty decent. Looking at it, watching what we're doing. And, um, I'll have a copy like a forecast next month. That's what we want to look at. All right, Kirk, you're up. Administrative report. Uh, track update, real quick. If you uh, went by the track in the last day or so, uh, blacktop is down. I think everybody knows that. The fence is going up. So the fence is going up. It's a six-foot fence around the turnstile that we talked about for people to be able to go and walk will be on the uh, northwest side. So it'd be, if you park behind the elementary school, is where you park and then go through the turnstile if you want to walk it. Uh, we have a confirmation from the company. I'm not sure if rain's going to hold them up, but they are looking at the last week in June to come put the surface on. Last so, week in June. That's good. That's which is coming up. So it just depends on if rain held them up or not. The um, um, and there's still gates. So I was speaking June. The I was speaking June right now. Yeah. Right. Okay. Next week, I think they're supposed to start. Then. Okay. So. Uh, kindergarten numbers. Uh, we're actually doing pretty well. We're at 62 as we go into the summer, which we've never been that high. I think you told me the last month. I told you that. But uh, usually we get 12 to 15 over the summer. So if we do that, then we would add a fourth section of kindergarten. But that's the highest our numbers for kindergarten have been going into summer. Uh, the elementary school, everybody knows we're getting new bleachers and a gym floor. The uh, bleachers are down. The custodians did a great job taking them down, and they were out actually the week school was out. So by that Friday, on that Wednesday, if you were in there, after the awards assembly on that Monday, they start taking them down. So the bleachers are down. Uh, the company is uh, going to probably come next week to start taking out the gym floor and putting the new one down. And then the bleachers go in. Uh, we have a Arrival date of like August 3rd or something like that. It takes them a week to put them in. You have to give credit to our custodial staff. I don't know if the board knows, but we, we've saved about fifty to sixty thousand dollars by doing this ourselves, by bidding the project out and coordinating our the efforts with the, with the companies. I mean, that's from the architect's estimate. And so far, everything is going as planned. That's great. You guys need to know that. Community needs to know that we're mm -hmm. striving well, for what TV knows. <laughs> but I mean, by our custodians taking everything down and all that, you know, that's where some of the savings went into. Yeah. Uh, we did have some uh, electrical wiring redone because when the bleachers, if you remember, they came out toward the gym floor. Now when they go back, we had to move some wiring and we had to actually add wiring because the bleachers are uh, just put push button now, you know, when the other ones weren't. So everything's handicapped accessible. Uh, what color are the bleachers? Our bleachers, I have. I have that for you actually. And if you we notice on tonight's agenda, agenda there's a change order for like $850 for end caps of the bleachers. Just put the blue jade logo. We picked the top one. So there's the, when they're pushed back, that's what it'll look yeah. like. They're blue with white we're seats, up, and they'll forward. create the JM on each side. And then when John's talking about the end caps, so when, you know, when you're walking up the steps, you'll see, instead of it just being hollow, you'll have an end cap like that on. Yeah. Cool. Very nice. And yeah, you won't see the hat channel, the bleacher itself. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be nice. End caps will really, I think, you're so happy yeah. when you see that. Be nice. So everything's moving good. Uh, remember, it's going to look like a hardwood floor, even though it's not. And the, and the keys will be like royal blue. Well, and how the center will have the 
bigger circle in the center, not the jump center, but the bigger circle will be royal blue. We've gotten the mileage out of those because I believe we were the first class in 1974. So, uh, yeah, they, we actually got your yes. We mentioned that last the meeting that that is all original. The floor and the bleach is original from 1974. So, yeah. Will there be time when it's in to possibly paint? I know we kind of touched on it, how you were really worried about the timing. No, we talked about that actually. The company that would paint it would make sure that even though the floor might be down, that they wouldn't get it painted on. So we might get still. Well, we're talking about going probably uh, a little over a quarter of the way up. And Diane Householder was helping pick out the paint to yeah. match it so it blends in with the floor. She thought of like a, like a, on a, in a tan family, but a, like a lighter tan, uh, at least a quarter of the way up maybe to blend in with the floor. And we can afford like the, what are those things called? The, the soft cushion parts under the hoops would match, and I don't know what they're called. Oh, yeah, um, where you should run into them. Yeah, those. So it would have like the overall general look. So when you walk in our gym, we're going to go, ah. Oh, yeah, we're trying, you're trying to spend all the 50 grand, we save now. <laughs> well, we're moving the uh, banners too to the side. So when you walk oh, in, nice. the banners, so they're going to go to the side. Um, we're trying to see if, being the bleachers now go back to the wall, if we can take the one hoop above the bleachers and move it back to create a longer, so oh, if you're going two ways, because they were originally out, so when the bleachers were out, you know, you could yeah. tie, so, but uh, we actually have to find someone that can do that for us, you know, just because the height and the weight of moving it and hurrying up, moving it up, so we're, we're checking into that, too. Um, RTT, if you remember, we uh, raced to the top, we were approved to spend the last remaining money, and the elementary school will be wireless next year, so, uh, I think they're starting that next week too. So, and all the work right now is being done at the elementary school instead of here because we need to finish that up uh, to make that because we have success by six starting August third, I think it is. So, um, Labor Days we're looking at uh, the same as this year. Uh, we always talk about that day right after Labor Day, but before school starts. But we're also looking at December first and March thirtieth. To do some more professional development. So it'll be the same as this year, basically. Uh, but again, that's all based on approval from OD. They have to approve the waiver days. Because we are still, uh, there's all that talk about going to minutes, but we're still days. So you'll see some schools are based on minutes, some are based on days, we're still days. So, I don't know if everybody can remember this house bill's going through, but you can just have me so many minutes and you'd be covered, but we're still on days. So. Uh, graduation, high school graduation, I thought went real nice. Air conditioner worked nice. Mm -hmm. okay, so at the time, that was real nice. So, um, thought that went very well. July board meeting, I guess what I want to make sure is it's the 17th, is the third Thursday. Um, I guess if didn't know if anybody was going out of town on vacation, uh, just wanted to look at that, I guess. I know it's a busy, summer's usually very busy, but everybody think you're okay right now? Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm not planning on being out of town. Okay, so as of right now, we'll leave it. If something comes up, let us know. Okay, as of right now, we'll leave it on the 17th. Uh, the elementary office, Mrs. Fisk, has been working with Mr. Roberts over there. And actually, if you walk in there, all the walls are down in the office. So trying to create an open, and her whole thing is security, so she's uh, planning on having parents come in, actually where you, before previously when you went to the board office, so parents would come in there um, just for security, and then they would open up the main doors when there's an event going on at night or something, but her whole thing is she's working on security right now. So she's redoing the office and rearranging some like where guidance is and stuff like that, so. Uh, county administrative meeting is for principals, treasurer, and superintendent. That's for the whole county. That's August 7th. And this year it's actually at uh, the Mahoney County Career and Technical Center. Um, North Jackson Parade, we've already talked about, so everybody's good. Can you just let me know, right? Um, North Jackson Citizens Yard Sale is, uh, Mr. Asen has uh, already said that the football team will help out on that Wednesday evening to help set up. And remember, everything this year for the yard sale, basically, not the ones that were separate at the houses, but the main uh, main section is, is going to be at the stadium. So, 
So uh, not actually in Mr. Uh, Harcourt's yard this year. It's going to be down to the stadium. And uh, Gary Hemphill's kind of running with that. So Gary's kind of the lead person for that, and he's uh, going to have everything marked off, and they're going to paint in the yard there beside, and, and that. So everybody gets, uh, they know what stand they're in. So, um, our Jackson seniors, I did want to print out for you how many uh, people. Pass that around. Just a breakdown of the seniors. Um, Mrs. Weary did this for us. So of the 79 seniors, she broke it down. Uh, how many were at school here? How many were at the Career and Technical Center? And if you see at the bottom there, the full amount. Uh, how many percentages are planning at this time? Going to college, a four-year college, a two-year college, direct to the workforce, or to the military. So you can look at that. And uh, again, it's. The first section is the students that were here, um, then the Career and Technical Center of those 25, what with, with their plans are, and then at the bottom is the full range of everybody. So it kind of gives you a breakdown of what their plans are. I'm not saying it will change over the summer, but as of when they left, that's what, that's what their plans were. Interesting. Um, class officers, we talk about this every year, uh, just so for Mitch kind of talks about this, I guess. Um, the advisors are adding to when they when they decide to run for office that uh, the requirements are that they have to attend two board meetings a year to fulfill their obligation to be a class officer. So, That's great. Um, that'll be give us more feedback throughout the year. Okay. That way they'll know before they even run mm -hmm. that they have to attend those two meetings. So kind of so that's out there already for next year. Let's keep that going. See if see if that helps. I guess get some more. I think it's every time that uh, they've attended, Mr. Spalding. Yeah, am I good for a little while now? <laughs> uh, no. We're expecting you every meeting. Now. <laughs> and then, I, I don't know if I had this. Oh, yeah, I did. I think I put it in your packets already, the press releases. We did send in a little article on uh, Mrs. Fisk being the principal with her background. And in your packet also is uh, our new learning opportunities, which we sent to the indicator for next year, which is... If you look at that and read what they actually are, it's very impressive uh, that we're adding uh, uh, psychology and government next year, and the kids can get history and English college credit now, but they'll also be able to get to college level and nutrition and wellness for next year. And uh, we're adding music technology, um, which um, is a mixture of uh, a lot of the commonplace stuff in the music industry, such as operation of live mixers and microphone techniques. Uh, digital recording and editing and composition. And then we are offering some STEM programs for next year. So you look at there, there's, I think there's four in there. Um, creativity and design thinking, and it tells you all what they are. Uh, environmental sustainability, creative entrepreneurship, uh, additive uh, manufacturing and designing for solutions um, are all in there. And they explain each one what they are. So um, this was sent to Vindicator too to have that in there. That's it for me. I just want to add on to Kirk's administrative report. You know, he came to the Citizens Association meeting last night, and a lot of comments today, very well received. So, um, can I add one thing? I'm sorry, I don't want to turn, but I just had a suggestion. If you might want to bring it up to Mrs. Fisk for the elementary, the academic awards at the end of the year. Okay. I wondered if there was any thought to ever having that in the evening hours, so more parents could attend and maybe giving out some trophies or something like that rather than just a certificate. Even it doesn't seem to be much of um, a delineation even between the honorable students and the all A students and just to, I don't know, promote academia a little bit more at that level. Okay. Just a thought. I'll talk to, to you Thursday, actually. All right, thanks. All right, John, treasurer's report. Uh, a few things. The card that's being passed, Arlene, thank you, card. That's for Mr. Delmore Stanley. He's the gentleman that donated the 45 shares of stock. We, we got back either 5,300 or 5,700, I can't remember, but it went to the comp sports complex fund. So that was very nice. Thank, thank you for that, yeah. Which, uh, real quick, just to throw into there, you know, as we're trying, uh, Mr. Kenny, the athletic director, is working on scheduling home track meets next year. And to do that, just a real quick notice, we don't have all the actual equipment to have a home meet. So he did price everything out and gave it to John. Like $34,000. That includes the goal post. Oh my. Wait a second. So so what's missing from the track? Well, we have to update all our high jump stuff. Um, 
you know, everything that is needed to, to have a home meet. That's with goalposts too, though. Yeah, that's with the goalposts. I mean, that's for football, but um, I thought it was only 23 for the track stuff. But anyhow, the donation, I guess you're saying, for mm -hmm. athletics will go toward this. Just about half of it already in the account to pay for that. So. That's great. We'll definitely make that happen. Kids yeah, are. Pat's already has getting some schedules yeah. for can't wait. It would be nice to have that um, uh, well delineated and have Pat put that out. Because I would think between the sports club, the foundation, and the people that are involved, uh, most people are going to be just plain old write a check. You know, if you asked him to say, look, we need to step up to bat to have this, to, to have it next year, and we got the track, that's what we need for the equipment, and you just put it between those organizations mm -hmm. and that. Yeah, it's a great idea. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. I mean, to put, a, to put a number for it, and we'll put, uh, you know, a little bit of, you know, we're asking. So, yeah. Yeah. That already did give you a uh, spreadsheet of everything. Yeah, so well, you know what's out in the last week or so. How much oh, I understand. Yeah, but I'm just saying, so it, it hits, I mean, it's, it'll come up yeah. quick, really. Uh -huh. I don't know how long it takes to purchase this stuff and whatever you're getting yeah. for it, if they have what it is. So we're hitting by the foundation dinner even, you know, we don't have it by then. Put some up and hit people up at the foundation there. You know? yeah. What about the cross country? Would some of that equipment be needed for that? I know there was some stuff they they needed a timer and they needed to certify the course. I don't know if he's trying to schedule any meets for that because that's coming up. Yeah, I, I don't know if there's an overlap in the equipment. I, I, I guess I didn't really have a chance to look at everything. Yet. Uh, Mr. Wolf, I didn't know there was still a need because when we've had the cross country folks in, I said, Is there anything you need? And they were always, No, we're good. I think to make it official, if I remember right, they have to have Ohio Athletic Association approve the course, the distance, <coughs> and somebody from them has to come out there. And, and they probably have to schedule a few meets, let alone have the timers and everything set up. And even if they're just, you know, two, three schools. Okay. And I know there's a little bit of something there needs done. I just didn't know. Well, that's good to know. Uh, could you gentlemen find out for Mr. Kenny what yeah. all needs for done for that? I'll so take care of those two things. The list in there. Yeah. yeah. So we can get that for them. All right, John. Anything else? Just a couple things, real quick. Um, your appropriations uh, for the fiscal year 14 were finished. We spent 11. Point, just over 11.6 million dollars. General fund operations this year. That's up uh, 161,132 dollars from last year. So that's a 1.4 percent increase, which is pretty good, actually, with the healthcare increases and all that. So, yeah. also, there's a second resolution to proceed for the uh, 1.8 mil renewal levy on the November 2014 ballot. So it came back with 1.8 mils, which is good. 2.1 last time. That's a that's a good figure. Yeah. So it's like renewal, nothing new. The original was how much? Was it 10? 5.9. Five, five, you know, before yeah. my time, but I over five. Yeah. Five nine. nine. So originally five. passed when 98. Is that the one? No, no, that was that was the that was the million dollar one. I mean, I can tell you, this was before I got here, before 99 out of that. Because of valuation increases and you know, more homes being built, it takes less to bring in the, that revenue. So that's all I have. Okay, legislative report. Um, something interesting off the Ohio School Board Association website is there has been um, a House Bill, House Bill 237, introduced by a Republican from Marietta, Representative Andrew Andy Thompson. I'm sorry to prohibit the implementation of the core, common core standards for math and English language arts. And the School Board Association is urging opposition to this legislation. I think it would cause a lot of confusion, a lot of backpedaling on all the things that have moved forward. But I thought that was interesting that there's a movement to It seems like that. there's more of a movement even across every all the other states. Really? To fight that, yeah. yeah. Some states yeah. have outlawed it, correct? Yeah. So there was one, was it? Mississippi or Texas or somebody, I just read it. I don't know if that's what you read too, that they're, they're not implementing. I don't know how new this is. That's the first I had read yeah. it. So. It's just in the last couple of weeks, there's more states mm -hmm. trying to fight that actually. But aren't the park assessments already based on the core? And that's mandated. 
So we'll try to keep it kind of tied, don't you think? I don't see it changing. I'm, I know that there's more of a push from other states coming out. We're going to go with the flow and do whatever they tell us. <laughs> yep, that's about it. Okay, public presentation. Um, before we get started, I guess we might as well ask the nice gentleman in the hat. Can you introduce yourself, sir? And for the record. <laughs> My name is Bruce Rogers. Okay. And I'm a videographer for Western Reserve News. So when can we expect this to air? Is it definite or is it... doesn't air. Okay. It's on the website. Okay. Posted to YouTube. Okay. It'll probably be up tomorrow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> What's the website? Uh, Western Reserve News. Dot com. Thank you. I would have done my hair better had I known. You might tell us a little bit more about it. I'm, I'm interested to. Well, we uh, <clears throat> mainly we cover a lot of school board meetings. City Council. We, who's Western Council. Reserve? Is it a private company? Is it yeah. It's a it's a uh, offshoot of the digital service company, and uh, it was basically started to a means of advertising our company, digital service company. What's the name of the digital service company? Excuse me. What's the name of the digital service company? I'm not exactly sure. That's it. Digital service company. Oh, that's the title. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, and we post a lot of uh, state and national news. Okay. Where are you based? Salem. So would you be able to forward us to this? Because it would be nice to have something that we could put on our website or other people, you know, we help you out if they want to see this digitally. It's, uh, it's never going to be live, correct? It's always going to be post-dated and posted. Yeah, like we, we don't. Yeah, we don't do live anymore. We did it one time, but uh, it's <clears throat> some, it just got to the point where the cellular system would slow down and it wouldn't look very good. So we, we gave it up live. Yeah, for our so we get some very good quality to, to, to see it. It's posted. Is it every? Are you going to come every board meeting? Is it something that we could put to have that or? I don't know. I don't even know when your meetings are re uh, regularly <laughs> scheduled. Is this a special meeting? Well, how did you find out about this one? Uh, I looked at the uh, Vindicator agenda. Okay. I was at a Western Reserve local school board meeting before I came over here. Okay. This isn't right here, though. In June, to close out the fiscal year, we move into the last week of June. Everybody's moving around. Western Reserve local <laughs> normally has theirs on the uh, second... Thursday of the month. Yeah. Okay. The board meeting will now be open for public discussion under the direction of myself, board president. Anybody? Mr. Um, Spalding? I don't know if you're interested, but these note cards that I had the kids write their, um, you know, wish list on. Okay. Um, I'll, you want me to read them out loud? Yeah, sure. Some of the stuff on here is a little ridiculous, so I won't read it. Um, <laughs> only have four, and there's probably about four or five bullets on each. Sure. So, okay. Um, vending machines, we're working on that. More outside lunch tables. Um, I know next year, uh, the soft, or, okay, the juniors and the seniors will be eating outside together, and the juniors alone um, filled all the tables this last, like a couple weeks ago, outside, and that's not even including the sophomores, or er, the juniors, sorry, excuse me. Um, okay. More focus on bullying, bullying issues. Um, okay, more fruits and vegetable choices. Um, umbrellas for outside lunch tables. So, there's that one. Uh, there's been a request for a swing set, um, another request for a vending machine, okay, that's it for that card, okay, uh, salt, drinks that don't cost extra other than milk, I'm not sure what that one meant, um, okay, and then salt, 
swing set, heat, and then plastic knife. Plastic knife for like the lunchroom because we we just have a fork and spoon, which is a lot better than the spork. We're moving up. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you get us a plastic knife? Because we because we'll eat like ham, like a patty of like ham or whatever, and you can't. I mean, you can pick it up, but. I mean, whatever. I mean, these are just the things the kids ask for. You guys can, I could give them to you, but you know, the, the electric ones, you just keep plugging them all. Yeah. Can you tell me the process how this came about? Um. I mean, how, how did you get picked to be here this evening? Uh, you mean Volunteer? as a class president, or? Is that because of your title that you're here? Yes. Okay, so prior to this, you asked students, the entire class, or the entire school, if they have a suggestion box? I, I really want to know the mechanism, how that um, worked out there. Well, the kids elected me class president, and I didn't want to just be like the ones that we had in the past, where they just sat back and, you know, enjoyed the title. I wanted to actually get stuff done. I mean, I think I've been doing fairly well. And, um... I wanted to see what the kids really thought, like what they would like to see next year. So I just asked them to, you know, write some stuff down on a note card for me at lunch, and I just collected it. So. Okay. Thank you for doing that. And yeah. It's really appreciated, actually. Well, you know, I, I love the idea. I just think if you can make have them say, look, we're going to listen. Let's just make it a little bit more uh, organized. Yeah. A little bit more specific. You know, say what it is that you would like to have if they want to do it by note cards or, gosh, you guys are all electronic. And then if you can summarize it so it's just not us hearing that so we know that they received it, and then we can give you a response. Maybe something I'll put out of plastic knives, but I imagine there's probably some rule about a plastic knife, right? right? I can't imagine, but, you know. I, I don't know, but that's what I would think. So you understand what I mean? So yeah. they understand it's not just that they wrote it down and nobody listened. Well, the thing so my suggestion is to summarize it, put it something in writing, yeah. and put it, give it to us. And if you can get it beforehand so we can read it on the agenda, it would even be right. better. Okay. All right. Then maybe then, then we can do something. About can we do something about what he has said? Sure. We'll the way that he would, that it was presented now, or is it? No, I don't have anything against it. I'm just a little yeah. bit not sure exactly if we summarize what it is that uh, says the plastic knife. The table the outside table, of God, yeah. having umbrellas and a swing set. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Spalding, can you elaborate since you mentioned it? Uh, I haven't heard bullying for a while. Do you have any um, inside knowledge of, of why this come about? Um, I'm really not sure... I if I see it, I, I say, hey, you know, cut it out. That's totally uncool. I rarely, rarely see it. And if I do see it, it's usually like a, like a, a kidding around. And both parties are laughing and it's all, it all seems playful. But I know that does, that can change. So. So you're, in your opinion, it's not rampant? No, it's not, it's not a large problem, I don't. I believe it's not. So. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Appreciate you attending. Good job, Mamie. How many tables do we have outside? There's six or? I think there's about six. How much? About six. How much are they? Another round. Oh, they're, those ones are expensive. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, those are nice tables. Yeah. They're not. Like, they're expensive. I, I, have I don't know. I'd have to get a price. But I mean, what are the guidelines for them to be able to go outside to eat? Is it only certain days or certain times? They just put them out when it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's why they want to well us, right? <laughs> the reason I say that, I've heard there's been nice days and they weren't allowed out. I don't know, I hear different things. Is there? Um, it's usually, I remember my um, freshman and sophomore year, it was a privilege to go out, if, you know, if you guys were good the day before, you know, you'd you get a reward and you get to go outside. Now, I mean, it was just, it's a nice day. Go ahead and go out, you know, be respectful. I mean, the middle school is watching you, so don't, you know, don't mess around. 
So I don't know, maybe you were out there more this year than before? Yeah, it was it was nicer this year, so we were out quite a bit. And, you know, kids do a great job. They clean up after themselves. Yeah. And yeah. I mean we don't wanna get that, you know, taken away from us, so we're de we definitely take care of it. Yeah. Probably we check into it. I don't know. I'm sure Jim has a price point, but because they're not that old, those picnic tables, but they are the metal ones. You got to be within the, five, right? Six. Hmm? You got to be within six, right? Yeah. Well, even the first year, I think we have. So. Yeah, five. Yeah. Not used to hearing kids ask for more fruits and vegetables, so that's kind of nice. Yeah, it's just more variety. I, I could I could go deeper into some of these, kind of um, explain what it was meant, as long as. That's okay. That's yeah. Good. More like more variety of fruits and vegetables. Okay. So. Okay. Um, there's nothing else. We'll move on to adoption of the consent calendar. Second. Second. I'm sorry. What? For now, right? Okay. Um. On, but I'm sure, like they oversee the future. Yeah. Okay. Is that agreeable with everyone? Okay, so I'm just making sure. Okay, it's done. Good call. Um, okay, so you'll make sure that someone oversees. Yeah, like I said, his wife's always there too. Okay. Uh, all right. So, where were we? We had a motion. A second. Motion by Mrs. Catania, second by Dr. Tharp. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Ms. Rose? Yes. Ms. Catania? Yes. Mr. Scholey? Yes. Dr. Tharp? Yes. We're on page 8. Motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Motion by Mr. Rasholi. Second by Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf? Yes. Ms. Gross? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Rasholi? Yes. Dr. Park? Yes. Mr. Baker, do.